Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Kickstarter Crap. Today we're going to be looking at a project called Scoot. Scoot is basically a big ass scooter. I've been skateboarding for over 15 years. When I was younger, I learned to weld so that I could make my own grind rails. Now I use those skills to design and build industrial furniture in Cleveland for a living. Okay, so you're building industrial furniture in Cleveland for a living. You're doing that for a living. You're living fucking well if you're doing that for a living, okay? That's awesome. Keep, keep doing what you love doing. That's building industrial furniture. It looks good. I would put that in my fucking coffee shop any day of the week. I think that looks nice, and it's functional. It's functional as, you know, furniture is. It just sits there and fucking does nothing. I'm being a little bit preemptive here because I know what's about to come. You guys don't even know what's about to come, but I know what's about to come, so I'm... Oh, okay, okay, okay. A skateboard is great for doing tricks and riding on ramps, but it isn't ideal for going high speeds or long distances. When I recognized this issue, I asked myself, what if I could create something to ride that was smooth and quiet like a bicycle, but rode more like a skateboard? Yeah, buddy, that's called a longboard. Yeah, it, it glides smoothly over all sorts of rough terrain. It's got them squishy, rubbery wheels, so it glides smoothly. It's not gonna, it's not gonna jar your ears. Uh, but it, and it's long too. You got a lot of room for your feet. You know, if you really just want to take it easy and you don't want to, you don't want to bust any tricks. It's long. It's got a lot. It's low profile. You can go far, far and wide with with your longboard. If you don't want a longboard, there's always a scooter option. I decided I could solve the problem by designing a scooter frame that would hold large bicycle wheels. It would be an absolute minimalist bicycle. No seat, no pedals, no chains, no sprockets. Oh, it's a minimalist bicycle. So you mean you're, yeah, you're removing all the good shit that makes a bicycle a bicycle. Oh, super minimalist bicycle. But you're, it's not a bicycle. You're not cycling anything. It's just like a, it's bullshit. Minimalist? You really, with the minimalist shit again. Again and again and again. Every, if I had a penny every time I were minimalist, I, I'd probably have a good, good hefty jar of pennies. It's a bit ridiculous to use the word minimalist as frequently as these fuckheads use the word minimalist. Mi oh, we got this new minimalist wallet. It's made out of nylon. It's basically some a bullshit scrunchie. We repurposed some chi some hippie chick scrunchie, and guess what? It's now a minimalist wallet. That's what I like to call an epic win. Oh yeah, it's a minimalist phone. Everyone needs a minimalist phone. Oh, you, oh, minimalist phone. You mean the fucking thing that is now no longer in existence because it was fucking bullshit and had no features on it? Oh, that shit? Oh, okay. Oh, I love minimalist phones. Oh, no. To create Scoot, I put two bicycle wheels on the concrete floor in my garage. Then I used sidewalk chalk to draw a frame between the wheels. After that, I measured the chalk and welded a frame together. There were no sketches, no plans, and no blueprints. I'm really not sure if we're supposed to be impressed or offended that he didn't use blueprints and he just sketched the whole bullshit thing out with a piece of chalk. Because that, I mean, that looks bad. Let's just be honest. That looks fucking terrible, right? Like, that just, I don't know, like, oh, I just sketched it out on, on, on the concrete. And, uh, you know, the handlebars kind of look like cattle prods, but, you know, it, it doesn't matter because I didn't make any blueprints, I just did a chalk sketch. The salvaged walnut base and square tubing were influenced by the furniture I built at Playhouse Design. Of course it was influenced by the furniture you build. The whole fucking thing is made out of right angles. That, like, if you were riding along and, and, and something stopped you, your, your nut bag is going to go directly into that nice pointed right angle, okay? I, that's not nice. The, the thing doesn't look nice. It just looks like a piece of decorative furniture. That's all it looks like. Every time I let someone ride it, they say, Please, Joe, just let me take it around the block one more time. I'm a little sad that I won't have the only one anymore, but now they are finally available for everyone. Trust me, Joe, you are going to have the only one. Your Kickstarter project is not going to succeed. You're going to be the only one on the planet with with uh, with a scoot, the only one on the planet with a scoot. Not going to be the only one on the planet with a kick bike because they sell them right now. It's the same fucking thing, only they look better. They probably function a hell of a lot better, and uh, the design isn't complete shit. So, you know, 
if you want that for the same fucking price, uh, then you could go and get yourself a kick bike. They're, uh, they're sold by a, a Finnish company. It's a pity that you do not ship to Europe. I would love to have one because my knees have problems when they have to work in an angle, like on a bike. So skateboarding on scoot would be perfect. Now, it's really sad, right? Because this guy, if he just goes to fucking kickbike.com, they, they, they're a European company. They could just sell right to you for the same fucking price and it's going to be a better product. So, Cooper Green, if, if you ever see this video, just go on kickbike.com and get yourself a kick bike. You know what's also interesting is all these pictures. They got all these goofy pictures. They're all very, you know, hipstery. You could replace this, uh, you know, kick bike with fucking anything. You could replace it with uh, a weird iPod, a rocket skate, a Zen egg. And it's... It's all the same shit. It's just like, uh, hipsters in, on park benches. That should be the name of my new fucking series. Hipsters on, on park benches. And, uh, what I do is I just fucking go around and record these motherfuckers doing this shit. Really, it's like... It seems like it could be a, a Keep Cleveland Weird ad. You know, like, oh, Keep Portland Weird. So support small business. Even if the small business is making a really shitty kick bike thing. Yeah. Amazingly, the Scoot won the Nottingham Spurk Business Innovation Award. Apparently, you could just fucking win an innovation award by making something that already exists. I guess that is the new definition of innovation, is making something that already exists. So, but it, an, an inferior version of something that already exists. So, if I really wanted to win the uh, Nottingham Spurk Business Innovation Award, what I could do is I can get a big, long piece of plywood and put some, ca like, four caster wheels underneath it and just... Say, oh, innovate, I call it a scat board. You, you take a shit on it and uh, it roll. It roll. You could put whole body on it, it roll. Pretty good, it bows a little bit in the middle, but... Overall, I would say that the Kickstarter project is well put together. This is one of those projects that is sort of a, a shitty idea, but the Kickstarter itself sort of put together in a good way. They use good pictures, they're not grainy, they're not a low resolution. And uh, everything lines up. They, they got the formula down. The problem is the product is garbage. Now, having said that, he does have some reward tiers here where he sells a uh, bit of a bike rack uh, or a wall mount, I should say. He sells a wall mount. And it just it got me thinking like, dude, you got this successful industrial furniture business, okay? Why don't you just sell that shit? All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Kickstarter Crap. I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember to hit that like button. Remember to share it with a friend. Thank you again for 100,000 subs, guys. I really do appreciate it. I'm just going to keep on trying to improve shit, and I'm glad you're sticking around. More videos to come. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Remember, remember to tune in next time when I turn over Turnpike. If you're within a 100 foot radius of a person wearing the Serendip, your shit might go off. It might go bzz, bzz. And then that means that destiny is about to strike. But uh, what that really means is that uh, you could have hundreds of people around you, and you'll be walking around aimlessly looking for the person who has a watch on. Oh wait, that's probably half the fucking people there. Oh, I wonder how I can differentiate the people with a normal watch from this. By the way, guys, I usually clean off my desk before I record these, but I'm sort of getting in that mode where I'm like, I don't care. You guys can see what my life's all about, you know? It's all about, uh, you know, uh, stale milk in the bottom of a cup. It's about a bit of a, you know, pizza board with a little bit of mold on it. I got that from uh, Little Caesars. I went into the, uh, went into the store and I was like, you guys like beatbox? You guys like dubstep? You guys like dubstep? Wah, 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 wah.